Welcome back to the shop guys. In last week's video, I turned the C5's traction control on and then I attempted to do a burnout while at the same time I had HP Tuner Scanner running to record everything that was going on behind the scenes. Now my goal was to hopefully be able to show you after the fact exactly what actions the C5's computer took to stop the burnout from happening. Obviously, things didn't go as planned. Toys life. So as it turns out, for some reason, the traction control on my supercharged C5 was no longer working, so to be able to show you what was going on behind the scenes, I took some scan footage from Ben's C6 Z06, and we took a look at exactly what the computer was doing behind the scenes. If you missed that video, I'll include a link in your upper right hand corner so you can check that out. So after that video was uploaded, I was left kind of wondering exactly why the traction control in the C5 was no longer working because I don't recall ever intentionally shutting it off in the tune. So I did a little checking and I started by comparing the supercharged C5's current tune against the tune that it left the factory with. My goal is to see if I could identify any part of the tune having to do with traction control that would have the effect of handcuffing the C5's traction control system from working, and it only took a few minutes to find the culprit. One of the many great features of HP tuners is that it allows you to compare your stock tune with the tune that you're currently operating with all the changes you've done. All you need to do is open both tunes up, which I've already done, and then hit this button, View Comparison Log, and it shows you all of the different things that have been tweaked through the years. And here is our smoking gun maximum net engine torque. And you can see right here, the stock amount was 350 pound-feet of torque, and the current amount is 640. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to 350, and I'm confident that this will allow traction control when engaged to work as GM intended. So with a quick change to the tune in HP tuners, I've uploaded it to the C5's computer, and now let's head out and give it another try. Wow, what a difference. My foot was all the way to the floor and the C5's traction control system stopped me dead in my tracks. Let's take a look at the scan. All right guys, so here's the scan. This white line is the foot accelerator pedal. This green line is the throttle position sensor, which is right on the throttle body itself. And red is the RPM. So you can see here, as I drop the clutch, and this blue line here is the speed, it goes up really quick here, which means this is where we start to spin the tires. And even though my foot stays 100% to the floor, the computer shuts the throttle body all the way down so it's only 25% open when my foot is on the floor. So that's why it feels like somebody's definitely taking over. And if you look down here at this white line, this is ignition timing. It drops that all the way down to basically zero timing. So that is a tremendous reduction in power. So this is exactly why traction control works so well, especially with electronic throttle control versus a cable. You could never do this with a cable. Now let's move on to intentionally triggering the C5's active handling system. But before we do so, here's a quick refresher on exactly how the active handling system works and what it does from a member of the C5 Corvette's engineering team. Now here's an animation developed by our engineering team to help show the performance of active handling. It simulates an aggressive lane change maneuver on a wet surface. The white car is equipped with active handling and the blue car is not. As the car enters the maneuver, the driver applies more steering input than the car can react to. The car starts to push or understeer. The active handling system senses this and applies the inside rear brake, helping to pull the car into the corner. Once the car is in the left lane, the driver tries to straighten it out, but the yaw inertia of the car causes it to turn more than the driver wanted. Active handling reacts to this oversteer condition by applying the outside front wheel brake. The resulting torque helps keep the rear end of the car from getting too loose. As the driver returns to the right lane, a similar sequence of events unfolds, worsened by the whipping action of the maneuver. The active handling system assists the driver in maintaining control by applying the brakes appropriately. This affords the driver a greater level of control as well as gradually slowing the car to a more manageable speed. 
the overall effectiveness of the Corvette active handling system or any similar system is directly related to the available tire traction and the aggressiveness of the given maneuver. Now with that fresh in our minds, let's go out to a safe place where I can intentionally trigger the C5's active handling system all from the front seat of the Corvette so I can firsthand experience what happens and what it feels like when it actually kicks in. To make sure we're only experiencing the targeted braking of active handling, I'm going to press and hold the active handling button for five seconds. That puts it into competitive driving mode, which will allow the rear tires to spin, allowing us to kind of get into the slide, and that way we can see exactly what active handling does and what it doesn't do. Breaking. Um, the car was definitely braking hard to try to get out of the spin. Here's a look at the scan. You can see here in the red that's the RPM when I hit it a little bit here to initiate the slide. The wheel speed here in blue kicks up. And I let off the throttle, and the throttle body, it, it follows lockstep here. So no intervention with the throttle by the computer here. And even the timing, it just goes from a very light part throttle, 37 degrees. And when I hit it pretty good, it drops down to 13 and a half. That's pretty normal here as well. So I don't see any intervention here by the computer to reduce power. It's letting me control that. So now let's take a peek at how the active handling is hitting one or more of the brakes. And here's a scan of the front right and left braking circuits during the slide. And as you can see here, there is definitely activity on both sides, but I think you can tell by the fact that the inlet valve to the left front is open or active and the outlet valve is not. The front left was being applied. And to be honest, I'm not 100% certain why both the right front inlet valve and outlet valves would be active but i don't believe there was any right brake activity now switching to the rear brakes you can see during this entire this is just a simple spin slide there was no activity in the rear which is not surprising so active handling is going to apply brakes differently for all kinds of different scenarios that could potentially happen while you're driving your c5 now let's take a closer look at what happens when I slam on the C5's brakes on this gravel road. Here's a scan during the panic stop of the exact wheel speed of each wheel during the entire situation. And then here's the activity of the front left and right wheel during our panic stop. And the rear tires are not left out of the fun, so here's a scan of their activity during the panic stop. So Toys for Life, why make a video like this? Well, I think there are several real and important reasons for doing so. First of all, it can be quite an unusual feeling when these systems kick in, so if you take the time to familiarize yourself with them and understand how they work like we have today, if you ever need them for real like on a rainy night swerving from a deer or swerving for a motorcycle or whatever the case may be, you'll be much more prepared and calm. Second, these cars are now 20 plus years old. The components of the active handling and anti-lock brake system include electric motors, pumps, and actuating valves. And in my humble opinion, you've got to exercise them once in a while because sitting around for a decade at a time in between uses is not a good idea for a mechanical device. And third, the C5 Corvette is a pretty amazing machine. There is a ton of electronic wizardry to make the active handling, traction control, and anti-lock brake systems work. And I think it's pretty cool to take a very up-close and personal look at how each system works. 
So guys, as you can imagine, putting a video like this together is a ton of work. If you enjoyed it, please share it on social media and with a friend. Hit the thumbs up below. And if you're one of the many people that still hasn't subscribed, please consider doing so. Thanks for watching.